the Florida Writer Podcast, a discussion about writing and other things. Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Florida Writer Podcast with your host, Allison Nissen. And today, I am lucky enough to have with me Andy N. Andy, could you give us a 60-second elevator pitch about who you are and what you write? Of course, yes. I am Andy N. I live in the Manchester area of the United Kingdom, or England, if you wish. This is where it gets confusing now. I am a poet and I've done six poetry books. I'm also an ambient musician on the Ocean of the Bockle. I also do my own podcast series, Spoken Label, and I do a couple of smaller ones called Reading in Bed, Comic Unity, The Cole, Andy and Amanda Show, and Wrestle Up. I also co-run an open mic poetry night in Manchester called Speakeasy, and I have a regular column on an online magazine called Sunday Tribune. It sounds like you're a pretty busy guy. Sleep is optional. <laughs> sleep, sleep is optional. Well, that's the way a lot of writers are, right? Completely, yeah. Now, it's, my case is weird because I, I never plan to take all this stuff on. It's it just built up over time. It's really I found it manageable cause I, because I'm very, very, very well organized. And I started off really as a poet when I was 10, would you believe? And I'm 48 now, or 49 actually, and I started properly writing in 2008 when I joined a writing workshop and and then bought my first book out in 2010, got involved in my first running my own night in 2011. And since then, the thing has been building up slowly over time. So you started off as a poet at the age of 10. Do you remember what that poem was about? Yeah, the first one was some really bad poem about colours and it was awful. The second one, she, this, the, that's the more funny one. I wrote when I was 11 and I got a detention for a week at school on it because we went over to the local zoo and they asked us, um, after we got back the day after, to write a poem about this adventure and our trip to the school, school trip to the zoo. And I wrote a poem about when the, a lion broke out of a cage and I let a teacher I didn't like. And you got some trouble for that one, huh? <laughs> A little, a little. <laughs> but but that's what we do now. We we like to uh, wear on our T-shirts, you know, be careful or you might end up in my novel. Oh, yeah, well, that happens with poems. That does really, so, yeah. Um, of course, I'm very clever with poetry. If I'm going to write about somebody, I don't just change the name. <laughs> I change a few things. So you write, uh, you you have a book about haiku. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dump, uh, dump. First one's already out, and the second one's about to come out. The one that I did last, uh, earlier on this year is called Underground Haiku, and that was wrote mostly at playing local train station during lockdown, because in England, lockdown, well, we're just about to come out of it now, but was dealt with for 15 months, and when previously you'd see absolutely hundreds of people going to trains on and off each morning, when I was going to from the day job, over lockdown, we never saw anybody. Absolutely, just like a ghost, it's like a ghost town, really. And the book I'm about to bring out now is called Haiku of Life, where I've wrote a haiku for every one, one haiku for every one of my years of life from a Pacific memory. Wow. So tell me the, I mean, I know, I know what haiku is, I know the style, but I also know that it's challenging to maintain form. Can you talk about that? Yeah, it's really hard. It's, it's it's really really difficult because it's like I've been I've said before I've, I write a lot of poetry and I when we went into lockdown last year I told myself because long story short with the day job it's not creative so I'll keep off that but they sent me home last year and I thought myself to keep myself going I'll try and learn a new poetry form and I want I decided a haiku just I, I tried it fifteen years before and failed miserably. But haikus, people wonder what they are. They're a three-line poem. We've used that. The American version is dashes. So it's got five dashes in it, the first line, seven for the second, and five for the third. And do you have a... Do haiku, like, bounce around in your head? Like, all of a sudden, you get... You form the patterns? Not in the slightest. <laughs> not in the slightest. <laughs> Usually, in my case, if I'm, I'm not that disciplined with them because... I'm really a freestyle for it or free form. So trying to do this was much more trickier. 
And then a lot of it is when I'm writing, when I'm on move going round the goal. And I was trying to write, scribble the three line poems down. And then when I get home, I'll, I will sit down. So there's been a couple of hours breaking it down, trying to work out if I'd make to reach a syllable count in each line, which I usually haven't. <laughs> I still don't, still don't now. So it's a case of then I have to rejiggle it round to get it to flow like a haiku more. And then there's usually symbolism attached to it. Do you add yeah. that? Yeah, as everything, as with the way I write poetry normally, nothing I don't tend to write immediately in one draft. Very, very, very rare. I will sometimes spend, and it's on a haiku, I spend weeks on it sometimes. I'm just not very fast at it. I take my time. I am super impressed, and you're making me want to dive into it a little more. I know um, a quick little offshoot story. When I was in college, I was a literature major, and for my Final, my senior year, senior year, second semester, I took a course in Chaucer and we could finish the unfinished tale. Um, and at the moment, I can't even think of what it, what tale it is, but um, we could finish the tale, but it had to be done in iambic pentameters and I couldn't get the rhythm. So I wrote it in a four beat. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> and I got a B instead of an A <laughs> because oh. I just couldn't, could not master it. But I think I... In all truthfulness, I really think I, I started the night before it was due. and uh, Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> not the way to so, do it. Not really, no. I, I, did a, I did a degree back in 2001, the 98 to 2001. And I always remember this at the end of the second year when we I did my dissertation in the third year. I spent 18 months trying to write a dissertation on it. And, and the poems are rubbish on the back of it now, but to be honest, but... I spent 18 months on it, and I know one lad who's a friend of mine still actually this day, and he did his dissertation in three weeks, and he got a first on it. And I was sat there, just about got a high 2-2, two, two, and I'm sat there thinking, I don't believe this. <laughs> so, yeah, I can understand what you mean there. <laughs> I think I knew I was going to pass, and so I really wasn't worried. But nonetheless, I did enjoy my final couple of days on campus. I will add oh. that. Yeah, same for me, really. I always, always enjoyed uni, and it's something I recommend for people if you're going to creative writing. Certainly go and look at it, like, get some training on it. Get And then, like, when I went into a workshop in 2008, I learned a lot more then because I was a supportive for creative environment. And then it's like I've been carrying on ever since, and really. And it, you think you've got to learn quite humbly sometimes with creative writing and then build yourself up because I know you're dyslexic like I'm dyspraxic. And it's that itself, it, in some ways, it triggers the brain to operate in different ways. And that's possible. I am really good at right, doing so many different projects because I get bored as well. <laughs> yeah, I, well, yeah. I, <laughs> someone looked at my resume, they'd be what, thinking, how could you possibly do everything you do? Because I am so scattered all over the place. Although I am starting to tout the benefits of time blocking. So now I block big chunks of time and then I s try to stay focused within that time period. Now, because people won't notice this, but on, because we're on Zoom at the moment. Diary. <laughs> That's fine. I'm very old-fashioned. I know what, forget what I've got to do every day when I'm not in the day job, what needs doing. Otherwise, I forget. Yeah. So tell me about dyspraxia. I don't really know much about it. Sure. Now, Dyspraxia self is everyone's one of dysle dyslexia is like obviously like a word and not or and or number blindness. Dyspraxia is a more extreme version because it's it involves physical coordination as well. I got rid of this when I was at uni when I was 1999, I was 28, and it was awful because I've struggled all my life and I still struggle now because it's I'm always I've had I'm banging into things, tripping up. And the amount of bruises I've, I used to get when the previous job for the changed it all around for me. You wouldn't believe. And but, um, at university, it was compounded because I'm not just this of dyspraxia. I've also got like partial eyesight. I was born with like about 5% vision in my right eye. So it's like it made life a lot harder for me. But I think in a lot of ways, it's a good thing because my brain operates in a different way to other people would operate and I think and that's probably come writing's a lot of come from that I suspect 
So you've had to learn to overcome and compensate for what other people would think is an issue, and you've used it to your creative advantage. Yeah, I have. And I told you, obviously, maybe right up before, but I'm also diabetic as well because I became diabetic in 2011. And I can remember one or two people, my friends of mine at the time, saying to me, well, actually, your creative career finished now. Nope, it's definitely <laughs> that was just the beginning, really. I think it made me, made me more focused on what I really want to do and made me push me much more self centered on the way I create and create all my products. I, I like how you are able to take what could be a challenge and just use it to that advantage, which is fantastic. You do spoken word as a spoken word podcast, spoken word. Spoken label, spoken label, yeah. That was, oh, I mean, that, that's, and this, this is one of the most accidental podcasts that I probably ever started. Uh, I started this in the beginning of 2016, where job, day job I do, I'm, I have to, I can listen to music during it when I'm working. And I used to, I got, I started to get into a lot of podcasts. And I thought, I'll have a go at doing one of these. And one of my best friends who's a novelist himself rang me up and said, Oh, you want to do the podcast? Said, yeah. You interviewed me as your first guest then. So I went down to go and meet him near where he lives. And I didn't do it on Zoom. I did it in a pub. And the full podcast is two and a half hours of me and my friend getting drunk and drunk. Okay, that's fun. So you just talked about writing on a podcast. Yeah, is that- yeah I got ah. drunk and drunk. The more longer it went on, the more rambling it got. <laughs> so, but now, yeah, nowadays when I do spoken label services, like your podcast here, it's very structured. I'm trying to keep it, and I have a I know where, where I'm going from the beginning. But we let, like, I might have A, B, and C lined out, but A to B and B to C, et cetera, I tend to just let it go naturally, basically. And you do some other things too. What do you, uh, you write music? Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always had an interest in music. It's not that I'm particularly gifted at writing it so it's more the structure and the mathematics i'm pretty good at because i know how to fit listen listen to sounds really and i started ocean the bottle up about six seven years ago now when i got i got a keyboard someone give me a keyboard and i think i regularly i get releases on now and i've just got a couple of albums coming out on the french label at the moment as well so but it's mostly like me writing music about space i'm just i'm so obsessed with astronomy and space All right, I want to connect writing with the music. Different forms of creativity, do you tap into the same energy? I think I use my my brain in a different way because I can't sing. I can hit high notes. It's not human, but I can hit high notes. (laughs) So a lot. I keep most of it instrumental to a trip I told you, but I do like working with poets sometimes where I can build some music around their spoken words i like the idea of the building the music around the poetry you know i mean i I, i've i've mentioned this before so anyone that's heard me say it is i would love to figure out how to write lyrics because it's not that different than poetry and yet it's an entirely different skill set because you can't just sit down and write a song it takes a different knowledge yeah no definitely definitely of it i have wrote a few songs and it's but i'm more of a poet really and it is i think it's touching in the same direction but it's a different enough to know what you have to a lot of it is just the rhythm on it i think a lot of the time you get away with lyrics and, and poetry i think it is a bit different well andy how can people find out more about the different things you do okay yes you can track me down on facebook as just Andy N. I'm also on Facebook as Ocean in a Bockle for my ambient music. I've also got as well a, a blog. I don't I don't bother websites. <laughs> and this is I'm lazy. But um the blog is one writer and his PC. And one is wrote as the O N E dot blogspot.com. Andy, are you ready to switch to our rapid fire questions? There we go. Do you own any VHS tapes? Oh, blimey. 
Uh, no, I don't actually. I've got cost me cassette and old cassettes, but not old, not VHS. What is the weather outside your window right now? Dull, but it has been. It forecast is heavy rain in about half an hour. And final question. Do you have a favorite chair in your house? My computer chair. <laughs> they do make some pretty comfy computer chairs these days. Oh, my, my partner's um, just got a new computer chair and she's good looks at, I guess how comfortable her chair. I think she's gonna fall asleep on her sometimes. <laughs> well, Andy Ann, thank you so much for stopping by. Pleasure, Alison, it's been great fun today. You all have been listening to another edition of the Florida Writer Podcast with your host, Allison Nissen. Allison out. Andy N. is the author of five poetry collections, the most recent being Haiku of Life. Andy is also an ambient musician recording under the name Ocean in a Bottle and has a regular column in the Sunday Tribune. He is also the host of a variety of podcasts. For more information on Andy N., visit him at onewriterandhispc.blogspot.com. Learn, network, and grow at the 20th Annual Florida Writers Conference, October 14th through 17th, 2021. The Florida Writer Youth Conference, October 16th, 2021. Make your mark. For more information, visit floridawriters.org.